Looks like a nightclub in here. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to Greggles TV Daily Rewind. This is where we go back a week and give you all of your tech news stories from the past week in one single video. This video has some information about the latest update for the Galaxy Buds Pro, which will come out this week. Information about some new features for the Galaxy S21. Again, it comes out this week. And then information about the Z Fold 3 and so much more. Crazy amount of news this week. Enjoy, and we'll see you guys in the next one. First story of the day about the Galaxy Z Fold 2. Now the Z Fold 2, if you remember, the One UI 3.0 update has been rolling out for this phone. And I don't believe it's hit America if I remember correctly just yet, but that has changed officially Today, if you're on Verizon and you have this phone, you can download the One UI 3 update, also known as Android 11, right this moment. I'm not on uh, Verizon, so I don't have it. I do have the unlocked version. I've checked for the update. I'll check real quick again while I'm here live. Software update, download and install. Let's see what it says. It's probably gonna say nothing because I'm not on Verizon. Yeah, so we still don't have it just yet, but if you're on Verizon, definitely check for the update. It'll give you a whole host of new features and slightly different look in, in certain areas. Generally, it's, it's a very similar update to what we have right now. Check for the update though. And the last story of the day, the very first update has been pushed out for the Galaxy Buds Pro. And it's, anybody that has this, this will be the first update that you get and this is what you get. So the update, very small, just like all these updates, it's about 2.2 megs, and you can see implements, hearing enhancements feature, left and right sound balance adjustment, improved Bixby voice wake up response, so when you say, hey Bixby, it will uh, work a little bit better, and improved system stability and reliability. And again, this is what you'll be able to see when you go into the settings of the Galaxy Buds app, you're gonna see the left and right sound balance so you can gear it more to the sound if you wanna keep it in the middle, so you hear it the same in left and right, keep it in the middle. Otherwise, if you wanna hear it more on the left, because maybe a better hearing on the left, um, you know, push it over there or whatever, whatever, however you wanna set it up, you can to make the sound a little bit more balanced the way you like it. Otherwise, keep it in the middle so that it's equal on both sides of the earphones. Let's get into the tech news. First story of the day is about the Galaxy Tab S7 and S7 Plus. The One UI 3.1 and Android 11 update is rolling out to those devices right as we speak. It's rolling out in Korea and it brings with it a really cool feature. And as you can see from this photo right there, S7 and S7 Plus get second screen support with One UI 3.1 update. And again, it's rolling out in Korea, so what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to use, for instance, your Windows computer as your, you know, your main computer, obviously, and then use your Galaxy Tab S7 or S7 Plus as an extended monitor on here. This is really cool. This is a cool feature to have, especially when it's built in to the operating system and you don't have to download a separate app in order to do so. Along with the 3.1 update, it is 2.4 gigabytes in size and it gives you a bunch of new you know updates and things right here as you can see on the screen so if you can check for the update you might not have it yet where you live but it is starting to roll out throughout the world last story of the day is about the galaxy s21 ultra and the battery life that people are getting with the exynos version of that phone. There was an article written by Sam Mobile, and I'll pull up a little quote from it so that we can discuss. But if you remember, Exynos version hasn't been a loved processor throughout the world. It's really been like people that had it, you know, a year or two ago were like, oh, come on, give me the Snapdragon. It doesn't seem to be the case this year due to increased performance and battery life is pretty good as well. Now this excerpt from their article is from Sam Mobile. It's been around 12 hours since I write this and my phone is currently at 24% charge and that gives him uh, four hours and 27 minutes of screen on time. This is with 120 hertz refresh rate enabled at the maximum screen resolution, mind you, along with a bit of photo taking, web browsing, watching an hour and a half of YouTube videos. This is day, just day one and the battery life could get better in the future once the phone understands my usage patterns. Now I wouldn't say his battery life is like amazing, amazing, but for me, that's kind of what I would expect and be happy with at that point. That's pretty much what I was getting with the Galaxy uh, S20 Ultra, Note 20 Ultra around that, because 
At that point, I'd probably have about maybe five and a half hours of screen on time, maybe closer to six. And that's kind of what I would expect, especially when I was running at a 1080p, 120 hertz. It's gonna be 2K plus 120 hertz. So it's gonna you know, use a little bit more battery life, but it seems to be optimizing it pretty well thus far. We have news of all about LG possibly exiting the smartphone business. We have information about the Note going away again and then we have another story as well, so let's jump into that one first. It's all about good luck. It's been updated to be used on One UI 3.0, and you can also download the update if you have a lower version than 3.0. Uh, it's also now compatible with tablets as well, which is really cool. But one of the cool things is, is that the modules also have been updated, so One Hand Operation, Theme Park, Nice Catch and Navstar have all received new updates with One UI 3.0 compatibility and additional features. And they've definitely updated the look of it as well. So you get a little bit of a different look with the icons and stuff like that. But it's generally the same thing when you click into it. You know, for instance, you get Theme Park, you open that up and you can theme out your device and stuff. That all kind of looks the same and they've added some extra features like I said in there. I think the big key takeaways are one, it's compatible with One UI 3.0. And then the second one is that you can use it on tablets now that also have One UI 3.0 tablets. If I remember correctly from Samsung, have not had the ability to use the GoodLock software. So it's a very welcome addition. So there was some information the other day about LG exiting the smartphone business and they kind of have one foot in, one foot out and it's pretty crazy and it's kind of sad in a way because LG has been very innovative with some of the phones that they've put out. They put out, you know, dual display phones. They put out that crazy cross looking flying phone. You know, they've had some really nice devices lately. You know, not maybe not the highest, highest spec, like the most RAM, most storage, all that stuff, but they've generally been quite flagship or mid tier and they've had some cool different features and the keyword being different. So let's talk about these tweets of them exiting. Now this tweet comes from Coffee Cat and he's saying LG stuff from Korea exclusive. Now it's time to let go LG's MC situation at the moment. In March, mobile business in Korea and other worldwide divisions will be closed and scheduled to be sold currently in a deal. However, two abroad divisions, not Korea, will stay. Number two, LG will only create and sell one device by themselves every year. Other low mid range will be ODM. And he means they're gonna be you know, sold off to another company that will end up making those devices for them. Rainbow and Rollable is coming to market soon. It sounds like LG will be making those types of phones. Number three, the employees currently 3,700 full-time employees. A third of them will be laid off from their jobs. A third will be allocated to other departments in LG. The other third will move to the company below. And the other company below is this. So sale bidding company that would buy pieces of LG or at least the mobile division are Google, very interesting, Facebook, maybe even more interesting, Vinsmart, who I don't know too much about, and Volkswagen. Volkswagen's the craziest one. I wouldn't expect Volkswagen to get in this. Vinsmart has the highest bid price. Volkswagen is rapidly rising as a bid target and seems to be thinking of synergies related to the electrical equipment business. BOE is in the game too, and then it's this information has been backed up by Ross Young saying, I got the same info. Me personally, if, if someone takes over the LG division, I think most exciting, maybe Google, because there's a lot of technology in LG phones, or Facebook. I know a lot of people don't like Facebook, but Facebook's this huge company. They don't have you know, a, their own company that makes their own phones. I, I mean, it might, could be interesting, right? At least they're big enough to compete with Apple and Google and create maybe a third division of phones, something that Microsoft tried and was unable to do with their own software. So we'll see what happens. And the last story of the day is all about the Galaxy Note and the future of this. It's a really quick thing, but he's got a great track record, so let's see what he tweeted out. It's coming from Ice Universe, it says Galaxy Note, and then there's a picture saying the end, which is crazy. I mean, this doesn't obviously mean that it is the complete end, you know, no one's 100% right, but we keep hearing it go back and forth, the note being there, the note's gonna end, it's not gonna be, it is, who knows?
Let's get into the tech news. First story of the day is about the availability of the Galaxy S21 series of phones. So for the 21, 21 Plus, and 21 Ultra, even though they were released in terms of you being able to pre-order those phones, about a week ago at, the, at this point, you can actually still pre-order them and get them on launch. So these aren't selling like crazy unless they produce the whole hell of a lot of these. So if you've been wanting to purchase the 21, 21 plus or the 21 ultra and still get it at the time of launch, which is January 29th, or maybe even a few days before you definitely can. The only one I saw that was a little bit pushed back was the 512 gigabyte version of the 21 ultra. That was about a week, a week pushed back to about February Fifth, but all the other ones are pretty much there. Obviously the custom color ones are still four to five weeks back and that's normal because that's what they were last week. So no change in that as well. So if you want to purchase those right now and still get top trade-in offers and uh, basically any color you want in any size and all of that, at, you know, within a couple of, within a week or so, then you should definitely want to pre-order it right now People are loving this phone so far that actually have it in hand, basically saying it's the, you know a perfect phone, that it's great in every single way, especially the ultra version. So definitely check it out. Um, I'm still a Fold guy. I will be getting the 21 Ultra, but the Fold is still my baby and I, I, I'll never leave her. I'll leave her eventually. Don't tell her. Block your ears, baby. I'll leave her, but I'm gonna leave her when the three comes out. I love you. Last story of the day is also about the Galaxy S21 series of phones and a company called Caviar. And they make expensive, expensive phones and they've done it again with the S21 series of phones as well. Now they're going to release five luxurious limited edition smartphones of the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra series and I believe the S21 as well uh, with and these are made with gold diamonds titanium and leather and they're extremely expensive so they have the gold line for $6,140 they have white alligator for $5,980 they have carbon for $6060 they have the black alligator for $6,220 and then they also have the uh, ox one which is $20,140 or a golden version um, of the S20 Ultra version, S21 Ultra version for $77,230. These can be yours with your <laughs> credit card and a whole lot of money. I, I would be very curious who's buying these phones. I can't imagine they sell many. Supposedly they have about 99 of each single one which is ridiculous like who's gonna buy that do you know anybody i guess i'll put that out there does anybody know that's do you know anybody that's ever purchased one of these caviar um custom phones let me know in the comments down below let's get into the tech news if you're looking to buy the galaxy s21 series of phones be forewarned there is an app that's eating up battery life on that phone. But this article is coming from Sam Mobile and they go in depth about this app and they go on to tell you that it's the Smart Things app. And for them on their S21 Ultra, it ate up 14.6% of the battery life when they used it over an almost 10 hour period of the day, which is, crazy and it was active for zero minutes but it still ate up almost 15 percent of the battery on that phone so if you're gonna get the galaxy s21 ultra phone look into possibly at the very least deleting or disabling the samsung smart home app let me go into my apps i know i have it installed smart things let's see i'm gonna press and hold it i'm gonna go to app info and you can uninstall it, SmartThings app. You can uninstall it, so you might want to look into uninstalling it if you don't use it. The problem is with using it and not using it is that if you want to use it, you're gonna to have to use it with their new SmartThings app. So it goes hand in hand with that, so that's one thing to keep in mind. Also, I believe there's a feature for the Galaxy Buds pros that it works with finding those as well so it's kind of like an app you need especially if you want to use the smart things uh you know device so there's a little bit of a smart tags i should say device 
there's a little bit of you know give and take there. You might want to wait till they push an update out to the Smart Things app to fix this battery drain issue. It potentially could also be a firmware update needed for the Galaxy S21 series of phones. But when you think about it in terms of are you gonna have, if you do have issues with battery drain when you get this phone this upcoming week, that might be what you wanna look for. And the way you look for that is to go into your settings. Actually, I should do it from my Note phone because that has One UI 3.0. Go into settings on your Galaxy S21 phone, and then go into battery and device care, then look at battery, and then just look at what you wanna do is uh, battery, see if there's any battery issues detected for any apps on there. And then you can also click into, uh, just click on the battery, um, you know, right here, down here, the graph, and see if there's any apps that are really causing any issues with battery drain and that will hopefully potentially fix any issues especially if you have the smart things app installed and it's draining your battery on the new galaxy s21 series of phones because remember the phone is being released this coming week let's get into the tech news first story of the day is the potential release date for the galaxy z flip 3 and the galaxy z fold 3 now the galaxy Z Flip 3, this information, both of these you know, pieces of information for the Z Flip 3 and the Z Fold 3 are coming from Ross Young. I've interviewed him on my channel. He's a great resource. I definitely recommend following him on Twitter. He's really knowledgeable about mobile displays and just displays in general. And here's his tweet. He was responding to somebody else about the Galaxy Z Flip coming out, uh, but he put when the Z Flip 3 come out, should come out and he said, more like June or July for the Z Flip 3 release date, which is literally, what, five to six months around the corner for the Z Flip 3 to come out, which is really, really fast. And then he put another uh, tweet because someone said, are both the Z Flip and the Z Fold coming out at the same time? And he said, best case, yes, or Z Fold 3 maybe later, which later, would indicate to me probably around the same time as the first generation came out. So if that holds up to be true in terms of this coming out later, you're probably still looking at an August time frame for this. If I had to guess, I kind of believe this will come out in August as well. Uh, Z Flip, I wouldn't be surprised if it came out in June or, or July, just maybe a month or two before this phone came out just because I think this phone, I don't know, it could be wrong, but I think this phone is gonna start to sell more than the Z Flip 3 if it isn't already doing so at this moment. And then also the fact that this phone's so expensive and for people to get $2,000 out of their account again to purchase this one, the, the, the next generation, that, you know, it's a big, it's a lot to ask. I'm hoping for June or July just because I, I love this phone so much and I would love to get something better, like better cameras, better this, better that. We'll see what happens. And the last story of the day comes from Ice Universe about how fast and accurate seemingly the fingerprint sensor is on the screen for the new Galaxy S21 Ultra. Here's his tweet, first of all. It says, I am surprised that the ultrasonic fingerprint center recognition speed of the S21 Ultra is beyond my imagination. It beats all optical fingerprint recognition solutions. It is too fast. And when we put it on the screen right now, you can see it's like, Unlock, do do unlock, do do unlock. It definitely compares to a fingerprint sensor like this one, where you just tap it and it unlocks. You know, real quick. I've never been a big uh, fan of the fingerprint sensors on the screen. I think they all kind of suck, to be honest with you. They're okay but I still love physical fingerprint sensors. They just work so much better. So I have high hopes for the S21 Ultra being not only fast, which I know some of you are gonna say, the S20 Ultra is just as fast, but is it as accurate though? That's the main thing. This looks, I mean, just one or two fingerprints, but it looks fast and accurate. Hope, and I would assume it's improved anyway, just because it's a newer phone as well. We have some really cool technology coming out for the new Samsung watch. So let's jump into that as our first story of the day. Now this information and this technology is going to potentially revolutionize the health industry. 
This tweet comes from Coffee Cat because Galaxy Watch 4 or Galaxy Watch Active 3 will reportedly have a blood sugar measuring sensor technology added. Apple Watch 7 is also planned to have this feature in the hardware. It utilizes uh, a ramen, I don't know, I guess that's right, <laughs> spectroscopy <laughs> for non-invasive glucose analysis, meaning the way this is going to work is that it's going to have a sensor within the watch that usually when you get your blood sugar tested, you have to draw blood and then put it on this machine and it will feed you out a number. This is not going to have to give you a shot. It's going to lie on the skin and it's going to be able to I guess sense what your blood sugar is within your skin again without poking you without causing you any harm in terms of pain this is amazing this is truly amazing so even if you're not diabetic and you just want to know what your blood sugar is maybe after eating a cookie or just throughout the day you're now going to be able to do that with the new galaxy watches and it seems like the new apple watches as well this is amazing and it's definitely going to make sales of these watches especially for diabetics go through the roof. Last story of the day is about the new processor that will be coming out in the third quarter of this year, 2021, potentially anyway, from Samsung and AMD, because it looks like Samsung and AMD are going to team up to put not only Samsung's Exynos uh, CPU, but also uh, AMD's GPU together, creating a crazy powerful gaming system, whatever you want to call it, that is going to seemingly be in some of their phones that come out later this year. This tweet comes from Ice Universe who says, we will see Samsung release AMD GPUs in the second or third quarter of 2021, which will be used in the next Exynos 2000 series and next Exynos 1000 series. Samsung may change the release time of the new processor so he you know kind of confirms it but then he also hedges his bet by saying it might not happen basically if this happens this is pretty big obviously gaming uh, especially with the snapdragon processors and the new exynos and apple's a processors it's pretty good at this point i'll be honest there's not a lot of games i would want to play on on my mobile phone it's a little bit too small but now we're getting to the point where it's so easy to you know connect your galaxy phone or really almost any phone to your TV or to a monitor and be able to play games, hook up a Bluetooth controller and play these amazing games. So if this happens you know, to be true, this should really even push mobile gaming and mobile processors to that next step. Maybe we'll see a Samsung console, who knows? But at the very least, this could be the Galaxy Z Fold 3's new processor and be a super huge, amazing gaming phone because remember, it's going to have that huge display again. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. New videos every single day. My question now to you guys is, how do you feel about gaming on your phone? Do you love it? Do you hate it? And when I talk about gaming, I'm not talking about Angry Birds. I'm talking about like hardcore gaming. Is it something you're interested in? You don't really care? I'm kind of in the middle. I mean, I, I would, I guess, like to game my phone more, but the screen is just a little bit too small. I still want it to be on these huge displays. And it's cool that I can, you know, broadcast it or connect it to a monitor or a phone. It's just I'm too lazy to do that, to be honest with you. But let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching. See you down the road. Peace.